Do you want to come in? Do you want to come in? Hey. Good morning, everybody. I look a little crazed. So today, we are gonna talk all about strength training. And I know you're probably like, Jacina, don't we talk about this all the time? We do. But what we're gonna start with today is actually a meta-analysis that came out earlier this year, which basically took 16 different studies of over 1.5 million participants and drew some conclusions about the benefits of strength training long-term. So as we're talking about that, Sure, that was very attractive. Um, I have another video I have to film today. It's actually a busy day, even though that was my last client. I have to film a video, film some Instagram stuff, oh, some TikTok stuff. I hate TikTok so much. Okay, enough with the dramatics. But I figured to save some time, we can kind of talk through this article from the Washington Post, which I think really simplifies this whole analysis so that it's a little bit more digestible. So I'm actually gonna leave this article down below. It basically takes the meta-analysis and breaks it down into like much more easy terms to understand. So let's see if we can do all three of those things together. Put a face on, read, and talk. I'm not confident. <laughs> All right, so the name of the article is For Longevity, Muscle Strength May Be As Important as Aerobic Exercise. So it's important to note that up until pretty recently, strength training hasn't really been like officially recommended. Like if we think about movement, the long-term recommendation has been 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week. I believe it wasn't until like 2010. Yes, in 2010, strength training was added to the Global Recommendations on Physical Activity for Health. So as you're watching this, well, as I'm filming this, it's 2023, so really not that long in the grand scheme of things, right? So let's just kind of talk through. Oh. <laughs> so let's just kind of talk through some of the conclusions that were made from comparing these 16 different studies. God, I don't know why this is so like, ah, not my Lululemon. <laughs> Okay, so the biggest takeaway is that, so the biggest part of this is that people who took part in regular strength training, which we will define what that is in a little bit, they have a 20% lower risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, lung cancer, and all-cause mortality. That's really hard to say, all-cause mortality, all-cause mortality. Why is it so hard to say? <laughs> so that's pretty big. I would say the other thing in terms of movement that we have learned helps reduce those things are taking about 7,000 steps on average a day. I've talked about that in so many videos before, but that is information from other studies that have actually also just come out in the past like five to 10 years. So those are the main like umbrella benefits to strength training long-term and consistently. Some other things that the article talks about is adding muscle, it will improve your physical fitness. It will increase your bone density, which I've talked about a lot before, and it just helps to reduce the risk of injury. So as we age, we will naturally lose bone density. Like that's just what happens. You know, when I say training for long-term health, this is one of the things that I'm talking about because I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you. I've had loved ones, grandparents who are perfectly healthy, have a fall, break a hip, and then their quality of life is shot. But that could even happen to someone at 40, at 50. And I'm telling you right now, your little two pound weights ain't building that bone density that you need. So then the article goes on to talk about cardio a little bit, like running, swimming, overall aerobic activity is really great for our heart and blood vessels, but does very little in terms of like overall muscle mass and strength. And this is why I talk about a lot too, like there's a difference in physiological adaptation between doing cardio and doing strength training. Other miscellaneous benefits that they talk about in this article, strength training improves the body's response to insulin and therefore leads to better control of blood sugar after meals, which means a reduced risk of diabetes or insulin resistance, conditions that harm the heart and cardiovascular system. So I feel like this is very trendy right now with all my little hormone health girlies out there saying that you should just do Pilates because strength training is way too intense and it's gonna disrupt your hormones. Nah, maybe if you're going too intense with your workouts, but like strength training does not directly cause hormonal imbalance. There's no evidence of that. We have to remember that anecdotal experience, it's important, but it's not as important as controlled long-term studies. Because if your anecdotal experience is what you're basing something off of, how do we know that it's the strength training, right? How's your sleep? 
What are you eating? Do you have any underlying health conditions already? Assuming that it's one thing when you have so many other factors going on in your life. You know what I'm saying? The article goes on to talk about how skeletal muscle can basically help improve like your overall metabolic processes. So improve your metabolism, how it functions. We already kind of talked about this, but it goes on to talk about how important muscle mass and bone density are as you age to prevent injury. So it's gonna lower the risk of chronic disease from disability and inactivity. Also it appears, so I think this this phrasing probably means that they're inferring it, but have to do more research. But strength training can have positive effects on brain health, so possibly help prevent things like Alzheimer's and dementia. They talk a little bit more about the effect of strength training on cognitive function. And then we get into recommendations. How much strength training is enough to gain these benefits. Sorry, I know people hate when I talk when I'm curling my eyelashes. So the Federal Physical Activity Guidelines for Americans recommends two or more strength training sessions per week. Two. All these people with their six day splits in the gym, you can do that, but you don't have to. If you did two full body workouts, during your week. You can push, pull, squat, hinge, rotate, make sure you're lifting heavy enough. That's gonna mean something different to everyone. But this goes on to say, ideally the session should include four to six different exercises. So not a thousand, like you see in a lot of influencer programs that use as many muscle groups as possible, legs, hips, back, abdomen, chest, shoulders, and arms. For each exercise, complete 10 to 12 repetitions, two to three times. You can do a full body push day, a full body pull day, three sets of 10 of everything, you're good. It doesn't need to be that complicated. It goes on to talk a little bit more about like walking and things like that. I'll let you read it because I've talked about that so much before. But the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because I feel like I'm gonna make one, one more last ditch effort, kind of like I did with steps. Like this is why this is important. I did this with steps. I've talked about it here and there. And then I made like one big video that was just like, these are the facts. These are the studies. This is what is shown that you need to hit for long-term health. So we're doing the same with strength training. Okay. That actually took a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to continue with our day. In the remainder of this video, I want to talk about something. I want to discuss really quickly just my overall recommendations for long-term health. Like I've talked about steps. I've talked about strength training. We'll kind of talk about sleep, nutrition. And then I also want to give you some ideas of how to implement it. Because if you couldn't guess, a lot of these things sound very simple. Like, okay, strength train twice a week. That's awesome. How do we actually implement that? Because when we actually break that down, it can be more complex and more complicated. So that's what the rest of the video is going to be. I have to do my hair. I have to finish filming a sponsored video. And then we're going to go to the gym. So let's do it. Welcome back. We are walking to the gym and on the way there, I want to give you like my very basic recommendations to live a long, healthy life. Keep in mind that all of these recommendations are going to be from studies. It's not anecdotal experience. It is from studies like the ones we just talked about with strength training. So we can kind of think of this and break it down into like pillars of health, right? First is the thing we talked about today, strength training. But the recommendation is twice a week. The next pillar is our general movement. So studies have shown that people who get around 7,000 steps a day, their risk of long-term health complications plummets. And ideally within this movement category, we're also like getting our heart rate up, so working our cardiovascular system. And the recommended amount of that is 150 minutes of aerobic activity per week. And the reason I kind of lump those together is because I do find there's a lot of overlap there. For instance, my cardio each week is dancing, but that also counts toward my steps or my movement goal. Next pillar we want to think about is nutrition. So prioritizing minimally processed foods and balanced meals. And then finally thinking about like sleep recovery, kind of like one big chunk, but getting seven to nine quality hours of sleep. And all of these numbers numbers are like on average, right? I don't expect it to be perfect every single day or every single week, but just like, do you do this more often than not? <laughs> so you can see it's like, it's simple, right? I didn't say it's easy. I just said it's simple. It's none of this greens, powders, cycles, sinking, whatever the newest trend is, gut health, whatever. Those certain things might benefit you. I've talked about, or will talk about those things in other videos. But what we're talking about today is just what these studies show us for long-term health. But obviously I don't know you. I don't know your goals. I don't know what you enjoy. I don't know your time commitment, anything like that. So just keep in mind, again, I am sharing what the studies say, not giving you personalized advice. Anyway, <laughs> I just know I'm always gonna have someone in the comments like, how dare you tell me what to do? Like I'm not, not telling you what to do. 
Anyway, let's go to the gym. When we come out of the gym, I'm gonna give you some ideas of how you can actually implement specifically strength training into what is probably a very busy, stressful, hectic life because that is what life is these days. Let's go. Bone got a couple cracks on it. Oh well, big boy on the retina. People show and tell something spicy in my drink. Do my dance like turning tag with a waist that a shit like a boy act dumb. She knows she hot, she knows she pretty. She's a for wet, the steam is all dizzy. I feel air, I feel petty. I feel messy. Oh my god, oh no, no. Zoe's here. Let's finish out this video first with a little bit of talk of like implementation. And let's stick specifically to strength for the purpose of this video. The first thing I want you to do is be realistic with yourself. I feel like a lot of times when people jump into like creating a routine around their training, they go from like zero to 60, right? I'm gonna go to the gym five days a week. Are you though? So if you're at zero days, I would start with one. If you're at one day, maybe go up to two. If you're at two days, see if you need to go to three, right? Oh, Zoe. <laughs> Another trick to keep you consistent is to pay for whatever you're doing ahead of time. If it's group fitness, if it's a gym membership, whatever it might be, put money into it. For me personally, if I spend money on something, I am exponentially more likely to stick to it. Another tip you can try, Go with a friend. If you like having outside accountability, I think that's a great option. Another option going along with accountability is hiring somebody. So if you want to work with someone one-on-one, -on -one, hiring a personal trainer is always a great option, especially if you are newer to you know training itself. That can also be a great way to not only be held accountable, but also to understand like, is my form on point, how to structure a workout, all of those different things. And then finally, maybe trying something new. I actually talked about that in this video right up here, which I believe I'm going to be editing this afternoon. There's a lot of editing scheduling stuff that I'm going on right now, but I actually joined a gym in my neighborhood because I was really interested and motivated to like learn and try out some heavier lifts. So today you saw me doing a trap bar deadlift. I've also been working on front squats, barbell overhead pressing, and it's a great example of like jumping on something that still fits within my goals, but it's something that I enjoy and something that I want to try out and get better at. So. Oh, thank you. I got the headbutt. I love you, Zoe. All right, make sure you hit that subscribe button in case you're not already subscribed if you want more content of this queen. I'm shocked she's letting me stay here. All right, bye.